in a world filled with war, hate, suffering, and Justin Bieber. Two guys fix it all with a battle about a movie. One film, two opinions, one coin, two sides. They feud. You decide. It's time for Film Feud. Hello and welcome to another episode of Film Feud, the podcast where we debate whether top rated movies should be top rated. I'm Vidur. And I'm Vikram. What's up, Vikram? Nothing much, dude. So, Vikram, why don't you tell the good folk, our pleasant listeners, what we're doing here today? Surely, man, surely. So, we take a movie from the IMDb Top 250, toss a coin, heads argues for, tails argues against. Wow, that's not complicated, is it? No, I'm getting better at this. And yet, everybody always asks me questions about what we do here. Well, we also get asked of what is podcast, so can't blame them. Okay, well, if you're listening to this podcast, just know that we feud and you get to decide who you think won. And the movie we're feuding this week, well, what can I say, Vikram? The saga continues and our feud saga continues. Yeah, man, these uh, episodes are draining a lot from me. So Why is that? Well, it's, it's, I, don't, I don't like debating Star Wars with people. I'm a fan overall. Oh, by the way, to be clear, the movie we're feuding, Star oh. Wars, episode six, Return of the Jedi. Yes. So coming back to it, um, I, li- I don't like debating Star Wars. Because uh, you're a super fan. I'm a Star Wars fan, yeah, and it's pretty clearly established. So and you, you love this movie? No, not saying anything about that right now. You just now. said no. Do you not love this movie? No, I said no about I don't want to say anything about it. Just why are you doing this? Because the coin hasn't been tossed and I know you'll squirm and not give me an opinion. Well, uh, okay, you were right. I didn't. So can we move on? Okay, we may move on. Why don't you just tell me the last time you watched this movie? Because it's been a while for me. Um, uh, Over the course of the last three years, once I watched it. Which is your standard uh, Yeah, routine. it's more or less every three years I'll watch the original trilogy. Again, you must love these movies. I'm, I love Star Wars. Okay. The universe. And I have to say, since we feuded the previous two movies, I've been itching to watch this movie, but I've been waiting for this feud. So I'm excited. So why don't we get to it? Yeah, please. Let's do it. So I'll be tossing the coin and heads means I argue for Star Wars Episode Six: Return of the Jedi and tails means I argue against. Let's go. And it's heads. <laughs> Why are you laughing? I should laugh. You're against the Return of the Jedi, which the is original. exactly what I wanted. Bull. It's it, it's shite. it's my least favorite movie of the trilogy. If you comb through our episodes and in general, we can at least have Star the Wars. decency to pause like two seconds before you flip a switch and start hating on the movie. What? what why was I flipped the other side? I said I love Star Wars. I was I very clearly said that because I didn't want to I don't want to show my dislike for this movie. And once again, man, the coin the coin's my bud. You left yourself an out, and now you're like making the most of it by pretending you hate it. This is an awesome movie. It's the end of an awesome saga. (laughs) If this movie sucked, we wouldn't remember Star Wars in the way we do. So I pretty much won the feud already, but I'm willing to watch it. Everything you said counts against to what you actually mean. Um, Let's just move on, man. Let's go watch the movie. And I'm just saying right now, you're screwed. You're just screwed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's figure it out. Let's go watch the movie. Just as I suspected, this movie is just so bad. No, it's not. Dude, I, I never liked Return of the Jedi when compared to A New Hope and uh, Empire. And before watching the movie, I was like, okay, I already don't like it. This is easy for me. I'm just going to lead into what I don't like about it. And I watched it with a new lens. And there's just so much more to not like. Like uh, after dissecting this movie, you truly realize that it doesn't work as a movie. Was the new lens that you were forced to be against it? Because... I watched this movie with a new lens of my own, which was, oh my God, this movie is so underrated. People just hate on the Ewoks, but this movie ended a saga in a way no other movie has. Name a third movie that has ended a saga like this. Matrix? See, you're making my point. Matrix very much did not. It just crashed and burnt. Whereas this Star Wars saga is rested on Return of the Jedi. Lord of the Rings? I don't like Lord of the Rings. Clearly, very, very, very uh, conveniently, you don't like Lord of the Rings. Was it good? Was Return of the King good? (laughs) It probably copied Return of the Jedi. The names are basically the same. Except uh, it was written like 40 years, 50 years before that actually (laughs) happened. Ooh, who copied the name then? 
Interesting. I think Tolkien copied the name. Tolkien? Like well, time travel? Yeah. Well, actually, he was going to call it Revenge of the Jedi, right, Lucas? But revenge was too hardcore a word for a Jedi. Well, it was Return of the Jedi. Then, like, pre-production, they changed it to Revenge. He thought it was too harsh. He went back to Return of the Jedi. Typical flip-flopping, Lucas. We've seen it before. I'm going to get a poster that says Revenge of the Jedi. You know, like a real nerd. Yeah. I now love this movie. It's so good. <laughs> it's so good. I forgot how good it was. Okay, can we can we let, stop being vague and actually talk about the movie? You know, we can. I'll give you some concessions. I'm not saying like it's brilliant, but like I have my weak sore spots with all of Star Wars. Like a lot of it's too cartoony for me. Mm-hmm. There's too much C-3PO in every Star Wars movie. Mm-hmm. And this movie is no different. Mm-hmm. But like the ending of the saga and the ending, you know what I love is that the emotional stakes of this movie determine the stakes of the galaxy. Now, that's some high art, high commerce shit right there. Well, uh, it's great that you devised that sentence, firstly, purely out of uh, zero feelings, because I know you don't feel that way. Vikram, search my, I searched my feelings and I know it to be true. Yeah. Also, all of the stuff that you said had already been established. It's not like the movie establishes it. It just tries to carry it forward, although very, very meekly. It just... Dude, Luke, I am your father. No, I'm sorry. The line is, no, I am your father from Darth Vader would not mean as much if it wasn't for this movie. And the fact that Lucas or, I mean, Lucas was in charge of the story and the director, but they framed this whole movie around the redemption of Darth Vader, that's actually kind of genius. It's not, it's very poorly done, in fact. I know they tried to do it, but they didn't come out that way. Can we just dive into the movie? Okay. I, I, I think you'll, uh, you can just keep talking about just generalized feelings that you have about this movie, but it's, I can, I can prove by the end of the few that it's not about this movie, it's about the trilogy and how it stitches together. I'm willing to wager that you cannot. And I will actually precede you talking about the movie and just say one word that's going to win me the feud. Emperor. Well, that's my one word. I meant to say two words. Okay. But the emperor is enough. All right. And also, uh, just before we dive into the movie, I just want to make it clear because I complain about this a lot with you. I'm not going to be doing any nitty gritties here because I don't even need to. Yeah. There's okay. just going to be broad strokes, movie plot points and all of that stuff. And that's more than enough to help me through the line. As Palpatine said, do it. Okay, so to begin with, this is actually something before watching the movie, I thought I wouldn't need to touch upon too much because my perception was that it doesn't happen for that long, but it actually does. The whole Jabba sequence is 25 minutes. Dude, Uh, Han Solo uh, was frozen in carbonite. They had to go rescue him. The whole world was waiting to see what happens to Han Solo. Well, that's conjecture. And it's not necessary, right? Firstly, Han Solo was written in after pre-production. They hadn't finalized whether he's coming back for this movie after contract, pre-production. Right? That's right. why they froze him in the first place, right? That's why they froze him in the first place, because he only had a two-contract deal. They didn't even know. They weren't intending to bring him back. Then one of the producers was like, oh, we should bring him back. And George Lucas is like, he's, he'll never come back because Indiana Jones had already happened. He was a superstar. And somehow you got managed to convince him. And then actually, like, even Harrison Ford thought that he should die mid-movie trying to save his friends. And George Lucas is like, yeah, I can't sell Dan- dead hand Solo toys, so uh, I'm not doing that. George Lucas is a genius. He's a Yeah, he's a marketing and, yeah, money-making genius. But as a filmmaker, nope. Entertainment creating. He didn't make this film, fight, by the way. Entertainment creating. Kind of did. Toy selling. Yeah. Uh, CGI yeah, yeah, yeah. creating yeah. genius. Yeah, work in advertising, bro. <laughs> make short films with funny toys. Like, that's literally what this movie is. So... Coming back to that whole sequence of Jabba the Hutt. Yeah. Now, this is the this is the first movie which actually, ex, like, we have a lot of exposure to Jabba the Hutt. Oh, I thought you were going to say exposure to Leia. In which case, I agree. Because Bikini Leia, winning. Oh, that was a positive? Seriously? Metal Bikini? Winning. What's, winning what is winning here? Winning for the movie. Winning for all 80s teens ever. Okay. Winning for all Star Wars fans. And Carrie Fisher, may she rest in peace. Winning for us. You know, the princess was too masculine a character as a means of showing how badass she was. So now it was like, yeah, she can show some skin and still be badass. Sure. Okay. Uh, two points there. I'm a Star Wars fan. I'm not winning. I'm not feeling getting the winning feeling here. Secondly, masculinity, I kind of agree with, but this happened only because Carrie Fisher complained that her clothes were too long. That's okay. the only reason they put metal bikini in there. So it was from her itcha. Usually they're being forced into it. Or showing skin. Yeah. Not... Although she did complain about like she was forced into it, wasn't it? Well, I don't know the contrasting reports, but yeah, apparently just... Maybe Lucas was like, uh, Carrie, just uh, come out of the dark side. Come like, you know, let me make you like a, a goddess to teens and adults everywhere. Okay, yeah. Moving on. 
Uh, bikini Leia? Are you hating on Bikini Leia? I kind of am. I don't. I don't see the. I don't see this whole Leia fascination as a sex symbol. I've never gotten it. Well, it well, didn't you watch this movie? This is where this comes from. Yeah, of course, I watched this movie. That's what we're talking about right here. A prisoner, metal bikini. Yeah, can hair. we move on? Because okay. that's like one scene. Dude, what about Jabba? Yeah, what about Jabba? What is that green glob of gooey shit? He's a talking turd. That's scary. Exactly, and you know, so so they show him for like one scene in A New Hope. They don't. It's only in the re-releases. Okay, so great. So this is the first time Jabba is introduced as a character, but mentioned in the both movies in the f- preceding two movies. Because like I need to go yeah, back. Yeah, yeah. He'll kill me. So there's this whole sinister, menacing thing of built up to Jabba. And it's a side gag. And, and that's Jabba. Yeah, it's a side gag, and he still ends up being powerful. And then Leia. skin showing bikini wearing takes back the power and just chokes him to death with the chains so weak it's like jango unchained so leia weak. unchained leia is the one who kills jabba also by the end of it that entire sequence has no part to play in the story except that hans rescued to the first part of new hope has no part to play in the story yeah. just a, apart from establishing the droids yeah. and the first part of empire the 8080 sequence cool as it is has no part to play in the story of course it does that's why the rebel alliance is fleeing oh it's just like because of this something happened but like you could cover that with the scroll so that's just a star wars thing at this point it's it's way too long this is the longest sequence of a movie where it has no part to play i think the droids getting lost and in the machine and whatever you know it's just it's also, so star wars also boba fett it's uh, boba firstly what the hell what do you mean what the hell what the hell is that he's not better than he is an empire in terms of being i agree useful. i agree and how does he die it's like hilarious. a half, half a It's not hilarious. By dude. mistake, you're sorry. laughing. You're laughing at the movie at this no, point, not with no, the movie. No. Yeah. The thing is, he got so hyped up in Empire. He's so badass. He can talk up to Vader and stuff. And then somebody hits his jetpack. A half blind Han Solo. A half blind Han like, Solo. Who's like, oh, where's Boba Fett? Boba <laughs> Fett's here. <laughs> and then he goes into a salak, and he's gonna be chewed for the next thousand years. And then there's all these legends that he actually escaped the salak pit somehow. How did he become a myth? I, I don't, don't know. get it. Star Wars is just that big. Because this movie should take away from that. Like his character. realization his portrayal is so weak especially that 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 shot where luke's fighting people that's the main subject of the shot and in the background you see a job a boba fett just flying across the screen hitting the ship wall and then going down <laughs> how is this thing uh, like so famous and popular how did he end up becoming so popular that he was such a big factor or his father was or his his image was the such a big factor of the prequels i don't know but can we move on from the first act it's just fun it's for kids doesn't matter all right sure i mean i don't get all it all that matters it is be- for kids you completely right it's for kids it's it's business oriented it's it's meant to sell stuff outside of this movie as well all that, that part matters works, yeah. is that han is back and luke is now a jedi and he's dressing in all black he's not technically he's not technically but he's dressing in all black he's confident yeah this is forced foreshadowing oh he's going to go to the dark side black glass black robe yeah. everything and he's learned how to use his like uh, fake arm he's become one limb wise he's one fourth his father now no one third actually darth vader has one limb Lim wise he's 33% on his way to becoming Darth Vader. Right. And uh, he's a little confident dude, you know. So that's it. That's what the first act's all about. Nothing matters, dude. You're not letting me talk about the emperor, bro. We'll get to the it. Emperor we'll get, we'll get to the emperor. We'll get to the emperor when the emperor comes. How about that? We'll get that? to it now. I yeah. want to do the Stewie impression from Family Guy. Something something dark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. See, that was funny. He they should have done that it wouldn't have mattered. Okay, we move on. Let's move Do on. It. I'm done with Jabba. I don't I don't yes. want to, I don't want to talk yes. about Jabba, Jabba anymore. Uh let's talk about something even stupider. Okay. The the forest moon of Endor. What? Oh, if you jump into the third act, I'm going to go full Vader Emperor Luke. You want to talk about the second act cuz there's nothing for you there, bro. Why? Okay, go for it. Wait, what's in the second? Luke's act? going back to Yoda. There's Yoda. There's the death of Yoda. Yoda, eight hundred year old Yoda master. Nine, nine, nine hundred. Sorry. Yeah. And then, uh, man, come on, Alec Guinness makes another appearance. What's yeah. the Star Wars original trilogy? Yeah, man, like him? some serious acting there. The guy took all of one day to shoot his entire sequence. It was brilliant. <laughs> and then he goes like, and everything. That... So technically, I didn't lie to you. Yeah. <laughs> and he might It's as well like, be yeah. saying, so technically, Lucas didn't lie yeah. to the audience. Exactly. And then it, it's just like it's it makes no sense. Like everything. that's uh, that that you hold meaning to in this movie is was written as an afterthought like no, even the yoda sequence they didn't have pla- they didn't have plans to have yoda in there nothing like yoda is struggling so hard to tell him that leia is his sister that ends up speeding up his his death <laughs> which eventually he could have gotten from obi-wan later on the scene after it makes no sense to it 
The thing is, man, I think retroactively adding stuff usually doesn't work. But I just think the Emperor angle works so well here. Because suddenly Vader becomes a grey character from being the outright villain in the first and second movies. And I just think it's brilliant that the story becomes about the redemption of Anakin Skywalker. Like, who would have seen that coming? Also, have you heard of this thing called the Machete Order in terms of how to watch these movies? Yeah, uh, uh, like the authentic pronunciation there, by the, the way. The Machete, yeah. yeah. Well, it actually might be the Machete Order, considering it's not referring to the, the <laughs> Spanish thing. But uh, uh, the Machete Order, I mean, I guess it's just talking about uh, to watch the Star Wars movies as the saga of Anakin Skywalker, which I believe you're supposed to skip one. And you're supposed to do four, five, find out that Anakin is the, that Vader is the father, and then go back and watch two, three as the story of Anakin, and then watch six as the redemption. And I think that's actually the right way to think about this movie. It's just the culmination of this whole saga, and it relies on the stakes of Vader. Interesting. Is, is, is it called the machete order? Because then you feel like taking up a machete <laughs> and just carving yourself out. I thought you were going to say much worse about a certain no, no, part of yourself. No, no, just the, just, just the inclusion of two and not one that just would make me want to kill myself. <laughs> and then the last movie I end up watching is this movie. It's just like downhill from one and two. Um, also, this, uh, you know, this interesting point came, popped up in my head uh, the planet moon of ender uh-huh. is, is in the second act they have bloody ewoks for two-thirds of this movie oh that's true because of the whole this cruiser sequence them establishing like a perimeter around the base dude green screen land cruiser come on man that was revolutionary for the time sure yeah i mean a lot of stuff was revolutionary for the time but i mean we it's kind of established from the first two movies as well it was not like it was like mind blowingly different or something and there's nothing in the new movies that's revolutionary you know is that are you using that as a basis of your argument that well, there's nothing no, but in the at new least movie? this with this movie kept upping the game from star wars and empire strikes back you know i disagree that with is? that what did it up it upped the final space battle no come on dude it, the trench run the trench run in the first movie yeah. a new hope looks like it's my Hot Wheels collection and I've put a camera and I'm like using miniatures. And this looks barely better. It's fine. That's that's what's supposed to happen, like evolution of technology and stuff. In and six years, <clears throat> they yeah. evolved the technology. That's why I'm giving them the credit. Fine. ILM did a great job one, first movie starting and even to what they're doing right now. But also that entire space battle sequence, the Death Star is supposed to be 460% bigger than Death Star 1. <laughs> Does it look like it? Not at all. You know what did become 460% bigger? The the path to the central core reactor so a ship can now fly into it. Yeah, so? Brilliant, yeah, brilliant. Uh, listen, they uh, just made it easier to destroy the Death Star without making it look like it was a bigger Death Star. That was, <laughs> why is there a Death Star in this movie, dude? After The Force Awakens, you can't complain about the Death Star in this movie. The I'm Force not. Awakens, why are we talking about The Force Awakens? Because it's retroactively made us pissed at the idea of using the Death Star again. But when they did it this time, it made sense because the Death Star was such a cool weapon. It made sense the Empire would build it again. I'm sorry, I disagree. I've hated it before The Force Awakens. Lies. What do you lies. mean lies? Lies. Okay, back that up. Well, I just think like... Until the uh, Force Awakens came out, it nobody complained that, oh, there's again a Death Star. Oh, why is there a Death Star again? It was just like, it makes sense. A planet-killing weapon. This is the best thing the Empire can do. So they keep trying to build one. It's clearly not the best thing they can do. It's their <laughs> worst weapon. They, it makes sense. But where's data? There's no data uh, like study here. No, it was like, fool me once. Okay, we made a mistake. There was like that Galen Erso like weakness. In the first Death Star. Okay. So let's try again. And this time, they can't help if some little teddy bears help them. You know, if it wasn't for the teddy bears mm-hmm. recognizing C-3PO as a deity, mm-hmm. despite it being against his programming, then none of this sort of worked out. And how precarious was the rescuing of the galaxy, Vikram? It you was, appreciating the finer points. I will, I will. I will help you appreciate my side of the story also. Also, talking about the teddy bears, man, they couldn't come up with a better song, dude. <laughs> it's... Okay, I don't. I want to move on from Ewoks because no, even I though they're a substantial say, part of this movie, it's sickening to watch them. That's too hardcore a word, Vikram. It's I'm not no, sickening. I'm watching Star Wars. I'm not watching Teletubbies here, dude. You can't say I'm watching Star Wars when like the most the end of the saga ends with two thirds Ewoks, like you said. Star Ewoks and Star Wars are part of each other. There's no, I do. disagree. It's Palpatine, Vader, Luke, Leia, Han Solo. All of that is Star Wars, not Ewoks. I want to hear Palpatine talk about Ewoks. Teddy bears, <laughs> Ewoks, <laughs> and now the Ewoks will die. You know the brief for Ewoks was Native American teddy bears? <laughs> I'm not kidding, I read this. Listen, you know what? I actually like the Ewoks. I always have because I watched these movies as a kid. I can't help it, they went for kids. And I'll tell you what, I used to do this bit about like 
the saddest moment in movies or something. And I have to say, it was for me, it was Sophie choosing between her two kids and Sophie's choice. Followed by Mufasa falling to his death, like paws up, looking towards uh, Scar in Lion King. And the third one was that Ewok dying and his little Ewok buddy trying to wake him or her up. And then just feeling and just feeling sad. I'm 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 tearing up talking about it right now. I swear <laughs> to God. So wait, the 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 actual joke part of this bit is that you no, 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 making the to, Ewok bit sound serious. No, I used to just allude to like the three like saddest moments in movies that I've ever seen. It's it's a reason. It's a bit, and it's a joke because it works really well as a joke. You know, you you can't say it's a bit and actually try to convince me that you're serious right now. George Lucas made me moan about a teddy bear mourning about his teddy bear friend dying. Oh Come on, God, man. Dude. Where's your heart? My heart doesn't feel that way anymore, man. I've grown older and it's very plain to see what George Lucas did here. He's He didn't want to continue with the dynasty. He just wanted to make sure that this was going to be his last movie, which earns the most money he can make sure it earns. So What's he made wrong it, with that? It's not a good movie. It's a great commercial for toys or whatever it is. You've just gone over to the dark side. All Star Wars movies are commercials for toys. He can't help it. No, he is the only one who can help it. What are you talking about? He's the one who orchestrated all of that to happen. Okay, you know what? Let's talk about let's talk about what you seemingly want to get to ASAP, which is something, the something dark, dark side. side. Yeah. I agree. This that is the best part of the movie, the whole Vader, Luke, and Emperor sequences. That's the best it's part too of this good. movie. The fact that Luke goes to the Emperor uh -huh. to actually redeem his father. Yeah. The balls in that kid, bro. The balls in that kid, yeah. He's the a true Jedi. Yeah, he yeah. proves himself that he proves to the world that he's a true Jedi. He's he has no fear. He sees good in his father and he wants to get his father back to the Jedi. Before the good you side. say these things, you have to say, I have a concession, and then say that. No, I don't have a concession because that's what this movie truly needed to drive to. That was the conclusion of the entire original trilogy arc of Luke and Vader. Fine, they threw in the Emperor. I think the Emperor is a great sinister character, works really well. But you need to show that for more than 10 minutes of the bloody movie. 10 it's, minutes is a lot. It's a two hour, 10 minute movie. And 10 minutes is the only part that matters. And Batman vs. Superman, they only fought for 10 minutes. Is Batman vs. Superman a good movie? No, but I like the 10 minutes, you know? <laughs> okay, yeah. So that 10 minutes should have been more, right? No, I don't think so. They should have shown more of like the dark side. It's not a one act play, Vikram. Like it needs to cover a lot. Fine, of the second and the, the, the other two acts also need to have an impact. All right. This movie has three climaxes sort of working in tandem, right? Yeah. It, like There's most... a space battle. There's the battle of the Endor trying to destabilize the shield. Yeah. And then there's everything that's happening within. So the conflict between the, the first two climaxes didn't matter. If you think about it. Luke no, they not... did. No, they didn't. Yeah, they did. No, they didn't. If, if you the think Emperor had died but the Death Star hadn't, then there would still be the Empire. There was still the Empire. Nothing changed, after, especially after we saw The Force Awakens, right? Well, there was a First Order. It's different. It's the, it's, the, it's just a, like a... Let's not talk about The Force Awakens as it relates to what happened after this movie. So, that's my point. If Vader was gone, em uh, Emperor Palpatine was gone, they really didn't... The, the, the destruction of the Death Star... The, the space battle, the Endor sequence, none of that mattered. You know why the Endor sequence didn't matter? Because it was an afterthought. Harrison Ford didn't have a part to play in this movie when production started. And they're like, okay, I'll write him in. So what do I do? Oh, is Kochal Endor ka kuch sequence banate? Fine. Great place to include toys. Sorted. Money I actually made. think Han Solo didn't have much of a part to play despite the Endor sequence. Yeah, he didn't. Yeah, so let's move on. Let's talk about the Emperor. Let's talk about the final scene. Yeah. Okay. Dude, the best music... John Williams has made for this movie and it doesn't even get spoken about as like a traditional Star Wars music. It's the final scene when they're going along the tracking shot along the ship right. and Luke just decides to lose it because Vader mentions Leia. Right. And then he just bang, 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 just like goes at Vader yeah. and eventually cuts his hand off. Yeah. And the premise that has been established that the Emperor wants him to do this. Yes. Yes. Strike then, him. Yeah. Strike him down and take your place next to me. And then, and then before he pulls back, that whole sequence gives me the chills, man. It's so good. It's the best lightsaber duel in all of Star Wars. Uh, highly disagree with that. Uh, just coming back to the score point, John Williams, great as always, except, uh, and this is not his fault. It's the movie's fault. His his scoring of the Endor sequences and all of that was weak because he had to go with this playful we sort of Ewok on. thing. Now that we're talking so, about the thing. So the score in that sequence, I agree with. Best 
लाइट सेवर ड्यूल एंड ऑल ऑफ स्टार वॉज बेस्ट आई यू मैड इमोशन डिटर्मिन ड्यूल नॉट लाइक ब्रो वी मूव डाउन टू गुड सी जी आई एंड गुड लाइक वेस्ट टू शो स्पेशल इफेक्ट इट कैन नॉट गो बेस्ट बेस्ट लाइट सेवर ड्यूल एंड ऑल ऑफ स्टार वॉज इज इन रेबल्स ट्विन सन्स with uh, Darth Maul and Obi-Wan sure. and it's the same thing it's the emotions and the underlying stakes and i think that duel is just so cool that the emotions even though they're not as good as this is the best but like this one is the end of a saga the saga ends with this duel that's what matters it's him li- using the dark side against his father just the way his father did to become who he is and then holding back at the last moment and being better than his father oh, so you only talk about that 5 6 second sequence when he goes crazy after he mentions leia that's when he cuts the, his hand off yeah that's just the best like lightsaber sequence in all of star that, wars see that again you just in the original trilogy at least obviously right yeah so that's not a pro point the movie's like it's it's like you were saying the original the return of the jedi has the best cgi amongst the original trilogy no shit yeah things get better over time they're learning the best duel according to me look at uh, the best duel according to me is obi-wan and general grievous from yeah, 2 yeah you told me that but that's just like 4 on 1 you just like, Like a kid, you're like, oh my god, four lightsabers against one. Because you're doing like, uh, what are they doing here? Except like, uh, what he's like somersaulting over him. Then they turn around and they're like, bang, 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 bang. No, it's black. Oh, he on... throws the lightsabers. That what you're talking about? It's not that, Vikram. It's an immersive experience. It's black on black, green on red, <laughs> tracking shot, music escalating, him fighting for Leia, letting the dark side in. He's just like he's almost about to fulfill his destiny towards the dark side, and he pulls back. How you know on the same page? It's very clearly because I don't, I don't believe what you're saying. You know, funny part about that, about the sequence is that uh, you know how they keep showing the emperor's chair uh, moving. Like he, it just turns on its own whenever he wants to face someone. Yeah. And presumably, like it's like the emperor, he can move shit. Of course, yeah. It's actually the actor who's playing the emperor shuffling his feet. <laughs> <laughs> they tried to do like a mechanized motor, and in tests it worked. And then when they started shooting, it didn't work out. So he actually told him, "Okay, listen, just shuffle your feet a little bit." <laughs> <laughs> so I really want to see like a full frame of that shot where his feet are moving. <laughs> then he turns, he's like, "Bring me to him." <laughs> <Be> hilarious. <laughs> Man, speaking of the actor Ian McDormand. I think his name is Mac some shit yeah wow wow he's I, the best I like him I like too. him yeah yeah and well him and uh, I don't know his name shoot me <laughs> what a non fan you are but uh, the fact that he was playing someone much older than him in the emperor under all that makeup right. which allowed him to play his right age in the build up to becoming the emperor that the prequels well, yeah. amazing dude you think that's why george lucas waited 20 years to do the prequels maybe just waiting like let's make sure palpatine age is the right way pop quiz what's palpatine's first name uh, i know this hint Neelkant Neelkant Yeah it's Sheev Oh yeah Sheev Palpatine I remember now but uh, fine man like uh, the character was great they should have actually had more and more of that side of the story because it's so important it, it just uh, to me return of the jedi was I can't find a better word than lazy effort from How George Lucas you? because he you don't just, believe that. No, I I know so because I've read so many like different accounts here. George Lucas apparently just wanted to end the saga, spend more time with his family. He figured out a way to do it by maximizing profits, and also like uh, they had no plans of in the original like Gary Kurtz, one of the producers, he left because in for this movie because he didn't agree with what George Lucas was doing. He was just. making sure the storylines all got stitched up together so that the movie the saga ended with this movie they had no plans of leia being the sister it was a, it was it was a, i think that was clear in empire when they were making out yes i agree with that too and it, it, he just he just made sure leia was the sister so that the whole luke leia vader thing just kind of stitched together the 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 skywalker saga ended at a high point there presumably that's what most movie making is what is what is he going to do end like return of the king without them winning No, that's the whole point. If you have plans for a three-arc movie, and if you have a story plotline sort of script for that three-plot movie, then then do it. But he didn't. They didn't from the beginning. He just woke up and he's like, "Yeah, this is going to be the last movie. I'm done. So like, let's. How can I make that happen?" I think you secretly love this movie. Why? And to what have I what have I said that makes you think so? I think it's like the way Luke knew that Darth Vader was redeemable. You know, your thoughts betray you, Vikram. You... I know you have good inside you. Okay. and uh, also to quote the emperor mm-hmm. uh if you will not be turned you will be destroyed <laughs> <laughs> with blue lighting yeah with blue lighting hey force lightning first time in this movie mm-hmm. how exciting yeah okay what's your problem man force lightning is awesome i they kind of established that more in the prequel so i see where it comes from but in that actual moment cuz he just sort of shows it and like looks just like mark hamill bad acting we're not even going to talk about that pretends that he's getting hurt 
but then Vader picks him up and throws him over and Vader's literally about to die the next scene. I don't, I, it didn't really come across as that powerful. They do show a glimpse of Vader's skeleton. I'm sorry if I didn't catch a glimpse of when, a frame in... When the Emperor, uh, uh, when the Emperor's lightning, you know my favorite part of this whole thing, uh, when uh, Vader picks him up, because I know people think it's comical, like to me the scene holds up despite this, is that his lightning continues sh- to shoot out of his arms. Yeah, and he's frozen he's actually. His his hands are frozen in the same position. So he's just doing that. It's not like, are they, are they showing his old age all of a sudden that he's like frozen because of arthritis or something? <laughs> <laughs> that he can't move his arms? I don't uh, get it. And then Vader catches a full blast and you see his skeleton for a moment. I think, you know what happened? The suit amplified the effects of the lightning. Oh, right, like an antenna? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I, yeah, sure. Like a, like a copper ball conductor. You yeah, know, like yeah, a, yeah. Like a Tesla experiment. Right. Does that help you make like your piece with the scene because I'm fine with you doing that yeah and then the emperor goes down the shaft and uh, you know it was such a great ending but unfortunately he might come back in some way which is so stupid he is coming back JJ Abrams confirmed Ugh, Lissai but uh, at least in 1983 the emperor died in a glorious glorious down the shaft death alright alright okay since you feel that strongly I don't clearly uh, Vader can't make it to the ship because he's he's done he's yeah. redeemed he's done oh he's done he's in pain all the time Vikram you know that James Earl Jones uh, came out with an interview after the movie he said yeah, I don't believe him what that he, that he was lying that he's dead no that he was lying that he's uh, good now he's still like a Sith <laughs> that makes no sense yeah I know everything about this movie makes no sense it's just oh, more to up. add to it oh shut up this movie is awesome and Star Wars would not be the same without it and that's that it's not dying dude <laughs> that wraps up this week's episode of Film Feud. Thank you for listening. And now we feuded and you, our listeners, get to decide who you think won. You can find us on Instagram, Twitter and Facebook at Muncha Movies and let us know who you think won there. You can also find us on our website MunchaMovies.com or you can find us on YouTube and just leave your thoughts in the comments. And please don't forget to like and subscribe wherever you guys get your podcasts, Apple, Google, Spotify, Stitcher, CastBox and more. Until next week. Bye-bye.